The time has come for us all to reflect on the year that has been. I shouldn't have believed this year would be different for the Maple Leafs. Editor Adam shouldn't have annoyed Luke on that one survival series. And these folks shouldn't have had these matches. Quite honestly, 2023 has been a phenomenal year for the quality of wrestling. We are in the work rate generation, and that doesn't appear to be slowing down year over year, which makes a list like this pleasantly difficult to write. However, it must be done. We simply must spend our Christmas season wringing out the last ounces of negativity from our 2023s so we may enjoy our 2024 full of positivity. Happy Holidays! I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 13 worst wrestling matches of 2023. Let me paint you a picture. You've completed all of TV and watched all the wrestling content from that past week. You've even watched all the great Wrestle Talk and Parts Fun Known videos, and you've just completed Final Fantasy VII for the seventh time this year, and you're sat there alone in your pants with ice cream dripping down your chin, wishing there were ways to break out of the confines of your region's streaming services and experience something new. Well, if that sounds like me, I mean you, then have I got the solution for you. And we call this fine vessel Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is an online tool that allows you to surf the web without the constant fear of someone repo manning your personal data right from under your nose. With Surfshark VPN, you can seamlessly encrypt your online data, allowing you to safely and securely do your online banking while connected to a potentially insecure public Wi-Fi. Surfshark also keeps your browser history and location locked away from websites who may want to use that data. Not only that, but you can also share potentially sensitive files without the worry of them being compromised or stolen against your will. And of course, Surfshark VPN also allows you to connect to 3,200 servers in over 100 countries across the world so that you can only dream of visiting in real life. So no more bored Saturday nights. Instead, just sit back and relax and enjoy all the Hulu Plus and HBO Max you want safely from the comfort of your own home. And better yet, if you're one of our American viewers or, heaven forbid, a Canadian viewer, you can access the original proper and good version of the WWE Network, even if they have made the interface rubbish now. What were you thinking? Look how bad this is! And because it's the season to be merry, get an exclusive Surfshark VPN holiday season deal. Enter the promo code JAMTHATJAM to get up to six additional months free at surfshark.deals forward slash JAMTHATJAM. That is, and I'll say it again, up to six additional months for free at surfshark.deals forward slash jam Jam that jam. Use that promo code jam that jam. Number 13, Jay White versus MJF, full gear. Bell to bell, not one of the worst wrestling matches of 2023, but ultimately, MJF versus Jay White was simply not the match that people wanted to watch, especially as the main event of one of AEW's biggest pay-per-views of the year. I'm still not quite sure what the thought process was behind the structure of this match. Maybe they thought Jay White losing in just a straight wrestling match would be worse for him, but ask anyone who watched this and they will tell you how weak Jay White looked coming out of this match match against the one-legged man who did in fact win the ass-kicking contest. MJF's injured knee, Adam Cole taking his place, and the eventual match we got were simply too much smoke and too many mirrors. Whoa. Number 12. Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm, double or nothing. Jamie Hayter and Tony Storm are more the victims of circumstance than the perpetrators of shitty wrestling, but unfortunately the bell did ring to signify the start and end of a wrestling match, and what took place in the time in between was not good. Thus, it ends up here. Jamie Hayter was the best thing happening in the AEW women's division during the first half of 2023, but then the injury bug bit her in the bum, and well, we had to get the women's title offer. What took place at double or nothing was caught in a purgatory between an angle and a match as the outcast jumped Jamie and injured her shoulder before the match begins. Then, Jamie continues to fight, and the outcast remove the turnbuckle and spray Jamie in the eyes with the spray paint and bump the ref, all for the finish to go horribly wrong as Jamie gets lightly pushed and then runs halfway across the ring to hit the exposed buckle. I give the match a slight pass as Hater was working hurt, but this was just too long for a screw job match and not long enough for a real match. Number 11. Bobby Lashley vs. Brock Lesnar, Elimination Chamber. How have we gotten three separate Brock Lesnar vs. Bobby Lashley matches on WWE pay-per-view, only for none of them to be the Haas fight we all want them to be? Rumble 22 was more about Roman and Heyman than it was about Lesnar and Bobby. Crown Jewel 22 was a bizarre squash with Bobby dominating Brock until he gets rolled up. And then this match at Elimination Chamber was just to set up 
Well, I'm not quite sure what exactly. Obviously, Bray Wyatt was meant to end up involved with one of these behemoths at WrestleMania, but like a four and a half minute match with a low blow DQ finish? Who did that help? And why has that been the last time Brock and Bobby have decided to involve themselves in each other's business? If that's the final chapter between them, this will be remembered as one of the most bizarre trilogies of matches in WWE history. Number 10, Chris Statlander versus Jade Cargill, double or nothing. On paper, Chris Statlander beating Jade Cargill was probably the right call and might have happened much earlier had Chris Stat not gotten hurt in 2022. But call me crazy, I don't think anybody watching AEW thought Cargill's two-year undefeated streak would end in a 40-second match, unadvertised, after she had already won another match clean. But that's what happened. And thankfully, everyone really likes Chris Statlander, so the celebration of her return and first title win meant that some of the criticism of this bizarre booking was drowned out by the cheers from across the galaxy. Galaxy. I'm not gonna say that the moves performed in this 40 second match were done badly or anything, but just what a bizarre choice this all was. Number 9, Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho, Double or Nothing. This is the third match on this list from AEW Double or Nothing, so you would probably be right in assuming this was AEW's weakest pay-per-view event of 2023. But while the preceding two matches made this list for unfortunate circumstances, this one was just plain bad. Some of you will remember this as the Sabu match, where ECW legend Sabu was involved for... Well, honestly, I'm still waiting for someone to give me a reason why Sabu was there, but he was only around for a couple minutes at the start. What about the rest of the match? Was that any good? I mean, really, that depends on your taste. Personally, I have seen enough Adam Cole plunder matches to say I don't think they're a strength of his. It always feels like they're trying to find creative spots with weapons rather than using their surroundings to actually tell the story of the match, and that was the case here. Add in Jericho not being able to get all the way over on a Panama sunrise and the ref calling off this unsanctioned match because Cole was hitting Jericho too much, which I know was Jericho's idea because he did the same finish in his unsanctioned match with Shawn Michaels at Unforgiven 2008 and the People booed the baby face then too, Chris. Maybe it's time to retire this f***ing finish. And all in all, I just don't think this match was the exciting blow off AEW was hoping it would be. Number eight, Austin Theory versus John Cena, WrestleMania 39, night one. I have a theory, an Austin Theory. If you're gonna tell everyone that your wrestler sucks, maybe make sure he doesn't actually suck first. Austin Theory was not having a good run as United States Champion to begin with, and then John Cena reappeared in WWE to let us all know how worthless Austin Theory was. This is a bold strategy for getting over a younger star, and not one that paid off for them, Cotton. Because sure, if Cena says that Theory is trash, and then they go out and have a great match and Theory wins, then yeah, Cena is disproven. But if you say Theory sucks, and then he has this match with John Cena, with no intrigue, and a simple low blow A-Town down 1-2-3 finish, then beating John Cena does nothing except make Cena look worse! I genuinely hope I never have to watch this match again. Number 7, Roman Reigns vs. Jey Uso, SummerSlam. Man, if you had told me in 2020 after Roman Reigns and Jey Uso had two classic matches at Clash of Champions and Hell in a Cell that the big Roman vs. Jey storyline payoff would have been this unsatisfying, I would have been utterly heartbroken. We might get another match between them down the line, but for now, boy, what a disappointment the SummerSlam match was. 36 whole minutes of Roman Reigns' slow burn trash talk match might work when people really get into the second half when they think Roman has a chance of losing, but 36 whole minutes of Roman Reigns walking around berating his cousin, who no one thinks is going to actually win, is just no buys. However, when you add in the fact that this was hyped up as tribal combat, which means no blood bloodline interference, and then the match ended via bloodline interference, and bloodline interference of the least logical variety at that, you are unfortunately left with not a very good match. Had Roman and Jay simply wrestled for the title of Tribal Chief, this probably would have had a greater chance of success. If only, I don't know, somebody had beaten Roman for the title or something. Number 6, LA Knight versus Bray Wyatt. Royal Rumble. I really don't want to be negative about this for obvious reasons, but you unfortunately cannot omit this match from this list. Bray Wyatt and LA Knight's rivalry on SmackDown had split the audience, and I don't think either side of the WWE Universe thought that Bray Wyatt's long-anticipated first match back in WWE would be a Mountain Dew pitch black glow-in-the-dark mini golf match. Granted, no one knew what that would entail beforehand, and I don't think WWE themselves knew either, but an incredibly basic five-minute match with Bray Wyatt covered in radioactive paint 
paint probably wasn't in anyone's fantasy bookings. Listen, if you really want to get that paycheck from Mountain Dew, go ahead. But I don't think the match with the highly psychological character was the one that needed the sponsorship. It just really hurts that the match that will go down as the last of Bray Wyatt's career is going to end up being this laser tag ass match. Number five, Tyrus. All of them. If we were all being honest with ourselves, Tyrus matches would have populated this entire list. Hyperbole is the single greatest thing in the universe. I accept that and I am prone to it. But believe me when I say, I don't think I have ever seen a worse wrestler in my entire life than Tyrus. May I present to you Tyrus running the ropes and hitting a splash on EC3. I rest my case. No one out there is watching NWA at this point, so I'm not going to pretend I am either. But let's just say that Tyrus vs. EC3, Tyrus vs. Matt Cardona, Tyrus vs. Chris Adonis, and Tyrus vs. Daga can all get banished to the shadow realm of professional wrestling. But let's be honest, they happened in NWA, so they're already there. Number four, Baron Corbin vs. Gable Stevenson, NXT Great American Bash. There are lots of reasons why Gable Stevenson is not being looked at favorably by wrestling fans at this point in time, but rest assured that his first ever match against Baron Corbin at NXT Great American Bash is certainly one of them. Now, I don't think anyone in the world could have lived up to the expectations that Gable Stevenson had placed upon him. I mean, being called the next Kurt Angle is like being called the next Babe Ruth or Wayne Gretzky or Michael Jordan straight out of the draft. It's just insurmountable. But I also think it's fair to say that this match would have fallen short of even the most modest of expectations. I'm not sure why Baron Corbin would be chosen as the top prospect's first opponent, but WWE has been making that choice for years. What they haven't done, however, is end that prospect's match in a double countout, which they did here. But even with the baffling choices aside, Steveson just showed none of the charisma, poise, or technique you would hope to see out of someone who had been training for over a year, and it isn't hard to see see why he seems to have been completely dropped from WWE's radar since. Number 3, The Miz vs. Shane McMahon and The Miz vs. Snoop Dogg, WrestleMania 39, Night 2. I mean, it's not their fault. Again, this does have to appear on this list because my god, what a cluster f to happen live in the ring at WrestleMania. The Miz gets set up to have his second impromptu match in as many days. How many of you forgot that The Miz wrestled Pat McAfee at WrestleMania this year because I sure did. And then just when we thought we were caught in a Groundhog Day loop, who should make his return but the egg exiled Shane McMahon, who then immediately tore his quad and hasn't been seen since. Man, I don't want to see anyone get hurt, but this section of WrestleMania sure felt like a fever dream, didn't it? The praise I will give all this is that Snoop Dogg actually showed remarkable timing to get in the ring and take over as The Miz's opponent. I say actually as if the man isn't one of the most successful performers in the world, but that is all the praise I will give this debacle. Well, that and the fact that Snoop has a much better people's elbow than a frog splash, which is like half praise. Number two, Jeff Jarrett versus Jeff Hardy. AEW Fight for the Fallen. Now, I know some people, including the ones I can see from my desk in the office, thought this match was a WrestleCrap masterpiece and shouldn't have been included on this list because of it, but I will simply not be coerced into believing this was anything but the worst thing AEW has put to screen all year. Leatherface appears and tries to murder Karen Jarrett. Jay Lethal hits Jeff Hardy with an actual hammer while Jeff is fighting Satnam Singh in overalls, and that's ignoring all the shit that happened backstage. I think for the most part, AEW does a pretty solid job in integrating their sponsors into their shows. Better than WWE with their Ruffles War Games this and their Zombie Lumberjacks that, but I can't sit here and trash the zombies and then turn around and excuse this. There is entertainment to be gleaned from all of these matches, but holy sh did this one make it hard for me. And number one, Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. SummerSlam. If there is one thing I hate in wrestling more than horribly transparent sponsorships, it is worked MMA. You see, a lot of MMA is actually quite boring. Two people grapple, they go to the ground, they try and grab a hold, and then someone wins by decision and everyone forgets they saw it. The exciting MMA usually involves a super hot crowd, a flash knockout, a huge upset, fast non-stop action, or something of the sort. This match had none of that. What even was this match? Was it MMA? Because in MMA, you can't just roll outside the ring when you get kicked in the face and the referee doesn't get in between the fighters to ask if one of them wants to continue. Was it wrestling? Because in wrestling, you have a match, tell a story, and it has ebbs and flows as a result. And this match, again, had none of that. Everyone was done with Ronda Rousey in WWE by this point. This match was just a mercy killing for her run, but the only mercy that was felt was the mercy on all of us when the bell finally rang. Happy holidays, everyone! Whee! And that's our list. Please make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications to always on so you never miss another list just like it. And check out this clip from the latest survival series. Oh, oh. <laughs> Welcome! 
to a Christmas edition of Survival Series, the show where we celebrate the spirit of togetherness in pro wrestling. 